Hi, this is Bitluni and today I will share my experience how I made a hole punch for aluminium sheets. It's the first tool I made myself, so it's quite amateurish, but it does the job. So lean back and enjoy. For the last make affair I made a ping pong LED wall where I had to drill 312mm holes into a steel sheet by hand. That was painful. Since I want to build a second version with 1200 LEDs, there is no way I will do that this way again. So I decided to build a punch tool that will help me doing this more comfortable. Since I will use 1mm aluminium sheets this time, I will try to make the tool out of mild steel precision pipes. I got me some new tools for my birthday to simplify my work a bit and get the parts more or less square. Pipes with a matching inner and outer diameter will never fit exactly. A lathe would be handy to send off few microns, but my crude methods work as well. Some of these parts will move freely and some will be press fit. I will explain later what all this is supposed to do once I find out that it doesn't work, so enjoy the montage. You can't imagine how proud I was at this point. Next step is the frame which had to be made from some heavy metal due to the length and the forces. You won't find that hole saw from eBay in the links below, that thing was super wobbly. Nevertheless, it did the job. I did the only hole that had to be precise using my trusty step drill. That's the counter hole for the punch. Now it's time for some welding. Guys, I got a refill! Yoohoo! A fresh bottle! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time I had a glimpse of the feeling I have the welding under control. So I will share what I as a beginner feel is important. First of all, secure your gas bottle. Using a flipper wheel the welding areas need to be grinded shiny and cleaned with some acetone. I have used some tables for the current settings before, 
but this time I tried starting low and going higher if it's not enough. That worked for me. Since the I-beam is solid 5mm thick, I used 150 amps to penetrate it deeply. I didn't use any filler rod on that first lap joint and was really surprised how it turned out. I used the filler rod only to bridge gaps this time, since there was enough steel to work with. If you look carefully, you can see how cooling walls are shrinking and moving your parts around. You can take this into account and work with it. This old Tony made a video on that topic. Once I find the right recording settings to show you the puddle, it will be much easier to explain. But it's a molten steel blob that forms directly under the tungsten tip at your workpiece. By moving the tip between the two pieces, you can control it and let it reflow with the parts creating a good bond. This will only work if you are keeping the tip square and close to the workpiece. One of my best worlds so far. Okay, that one doesn't win the beauty contest. You pro welders are probably cringing right now, but for me it's a huge success coming from worlds like this. It holds up. This guiding pipe is more of a precision work. There are no strong forces, it just needs to be square. Since it's only 1.5mm thick, I started with 50 amps and went up to 70. The weld is no beauty, but I managed to avoid huge deformations and blobs that I would have to grind off later. To have the pieces of the lever pivot in line, I put the rod in and tacked them in place first. The smoke is coming from some remaining cutting oil inside of the profile pieces. These welds are ugly, but the gap was difficult to bridge without melting a hole in the thinner profiles. I will use these splints to keep the moving parts in place. Oops, that happens if you forget to turn on the gas. Thankfully you can fix that using some filler rod. As you can see I still need to learn how to push the filler forward using my fingers. This piece is pushing down the punch. I hope the worlds hold up. Some final grinder cosmetics and it's time to put it together. Oh. 
I made a counter hole of the punch on an adjustable plate so I'd be able to align it with my crooked assembly. First test. What? It's too short. Okay, 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 okay. Put something in between. That's it. Oh shit, it doesn't work. No! It's, it's strong enough. <laughs> now, uh, okay, there's a slight problem. Uh, it doesn't go back. Here is some genuine joy after three days of work. Oh, it's so clean. <laughs> oh, this is insane. Yes, 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 yes. So, take a look at this. This is so clean. When I designed this punch, I wanted something to be able to aim where the actual hole will go. So, um, the main rod um, that's pressing into the sheet is split in half and there is a soft uh, spring in the center that moves this uh, part out and I can use it for aiming. Uh, when this whole contraption is pressed down, this will just go in and the outer ring will press on the sheet and that's what you want to have uh, to keep the sheet flat while it's punching out the hole. And this stiff spring here uh, will be then pressed back so this outer ring will move back and uh, this center rod will come out again. So um, that is how the hole is pressed. It's a really cool design, but uh, it's not complete since I didn't think about how it's pulled out again. And that's the problem since this part is loose and will stay in the hole of the sheet and will pull the complete sheet uh, upwards. And that's something we don't want to have. So I have to simplify this design uh, without the ability to aim like this. And the center rod will be in one piece. And I will use this ring to pull this out again. So the rod will be retracted and the sheet stays where it is. So that's the plan. Let's modify it and try again. This is the new version. As you can see, the center rod is always hidden now. So it will retract when the punch is released. I also welded the upper part, since the press fit wasn't strong enough at these forces. Let's test it. You can see how even these I-beams flex apart at these forces. <laughs> nice! Here another view angle. The punch is a bit crooked, but it works nevertheless. The punched out pieces are falling down the bottom. Woohoo! Bit coins! I wasn't happy to not have a way to aim the 1200 holes anymore. So I thought I will make use of the freed up inner hole and put in an LED. 
it only needs a current limiting resistor and a battery case. The 5mm LED fits exactly and is nicely hidden inside. The spot however is still a bit fuzzy, so I thought maybe some 3D printed insets will help out. The pinhole inset was still too fuzzy, but the crosshairs were really cool. What I didn't think about was that I need to put a punch through the guiding pipe where the wires wouldn't fit. But a small connector solves this issue. Okay, let's go! First aiming tests were promising, so let's test it with one of the actual sheets I'll be using for my new LED wall. This one is 1mm thick, while the one before was 0.75. So this is the real deal. If you are wondering, the length of the frame and the placement of the punch are on purpose this way. It allows me to reach every point on the sheet while keeping it as short as possible. The hole was well centered and it's really clean. I can't wait to build a giant ping pong LED wall using this. If you don't want to miss that and many other makeup projects, subscribe to my channel and consider supporting me since I need a ton of steel now that I'm really hooked. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye! Ah, cheap.